In this video, I'll be sharing three popular Canadian stocks that I will not be buying anytime soon and that I think are complete ripoffs in today's market. But although I wouldn't be buying these stocks personally, it doesn't mean that the underlying companies are bad by any means. At the right price, I would potentially buy all three of these stocks in today's video, but the fact is I don't think the current valuations are attractive enough to create solid future returns. So anyways, make sure to annihilate that like button if you do gather any value today. And if you haven't already, what are you doing? Please consider subscribing if you do want to see some more Canadian content. Finally, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Neo, but more on that later. All right, now the first popular Canadian stock that I am not going to be buying right now is actually TELUS with ticker symbol T.TO. If you live in Canada, I shouldn't need to explain that TELUS is one of the largest telecommunications providers in the country, which offers services such as phone mobility plans, TV and internet subscriptions, security, and much more. And being that TELUS receives a bunch of recurring revenue, this actually makes it quite a stable business model and quite a attractive for many investors. However, TELUS's stock really hasn't done that much over the past five years, being up just over 27%, but after including dividends, the total five-year return is 60%, which would be very similar to that of the S&P 500 after including dividends. All right, now, even despite having similar returns to the overall market, here's why I would not buy TELUS stock right now. If we calculate TELUS's forward PE ratio by dividing their current stock price of $28 by the average expected EPS of $1.24, in 2022, we get a forward PE of about 23. Now at face value, it doesn't look that expensive, especially considering that TELUS is expected to continue growing their earnings at about 15% per year over the next five years, which would give the stock a fair peg ratio of 1.5. But if we look at TELUS's enterprise value or EV, we can see that it is 50% higher than their market cap. And this immediately suggests two things to me. For one, TELUS has a lot more debt than cash on their balance sheet. And secondly, TELUS's value is a lot more expensive than it appears. In fact, we can calculate TELUS's EV per share by adding 50% to the current share price of $28.79, which gives us $43.19 per share. Therefore, calculating TELUS's 2022 forward EV to earnings ratio, it comes out to nearly 35, which is extremely expensive for a telecom company in my opinion. Even considering TELUS's EPS growth rate over the next five years being about 15%, this would still give them an EV to earnings growth ratio above two, which really isn't that cheap by any means. And the second reason I would avoid TELUS stock right now is because interest rates are rising dramatically. Only a few months ago, Canada's prime interest rate was 2.45%, but more recently, it's gone up all the way to 3.7%, making it far more expensive to borrow debt nowadays. Just check out this article I found on Investopedia explaining the impact of interest rates on dividend stocks in particular. It says, interest rate sensitive stocks, the companies that typically have have the highest dividend yields are generally in the sectors with the heaviest debt loads, such as utilities, telecommunications, and real estate investment trusts. These sectors are also known as interest rate sensitive sectors because of their sensitivity to changes in interest rates. If interest rates rise, share prices of companies in these sectors fall. Conversely, if interest rates decline, share prices of these companies rise. Now, of course, that's an oversimplification, but you get the point. Rising interest rates are a huge burden to companies like TELUS, which have a high dividend yield and a ton of debt where they actually hold about $21 billion of debt on the balance sheet. So riddle me this, why would you buy TELUS stock if you could buy TD Bank stock that will actually benefit from rising interest rates over the coming years and they're trading at half the valuation of TELUS? TD is expected to grow its EPS at 17.5% per year over the next five years while it has a trailing PE ratio of about 11, which means TD's peg ratio is well below one right now. I just honestly don't understand the appeal for TELUS stock right now. I would not be buying at these prices and even after the 15% correction, I still think this stock has a long way to go down for it to actually become very attractive to me. Now before we get into the second stock, I want to tell you about our sponsor NEO. NEO is a digital alternative to the major financial institutions in Canada created by the founders of Skip the Dishes and they offer a wide variety of financial products. In fact, one of their products I recently got my hands on is this NEO Cashback MasterCard which has zero monthly or annual fees and you'll even get a $50 credit when you sign up. With the NEO Cashback MasterCard, you can get an average of 5% cash 
cashback at Neo Partner locations all across Canada, like Walmart, Earl's, Canadian Tire, and Petro Canada, just to name a few. For example, I recently went out for dinner at one of my favorite restaurants in town called Jeffrey's Cafe, and without even knowing if it was a Neo Partner location, I used this credit card to pay, and I actually got 3% cash back, which Neo notified me right after I paid my bill. But even if you don't shop at any of their partner stores, you'll still get a minimum of 1% cash back on every single purchase you make. And the sign up process was super simple. I signed up online and got my digital card right away, and then about two weeks later, I got my physical card in the mail. And yes, this card is available to everyone in Canada, even including those in Quebec. So if you're interested in signing up for the Neo Cashback MasterCard today, make sure to use my link in the description or the pinned comment below to get a $50 free credit applied to your account when you sign up, as well as up to 15% cash back on your first purchase. Guys, this is a great way to both build your credit score as well as earn some cash back on the side too, so I would highly recommend it. Anyways, with that said, let's move on to stock number two today that I will not be buying, and that is Air Canada with ticker symbol AC.TO. Now, Air Canada is the biggest airline here in Canada, and it also was one of the 20 top airlines in the world in 2019, but ever since the pandemic, it's been crushed down 65% from its all-time highs to a $6 billion market cap where it sits today. And to be completely honest with you all, I believe Air Canada is in the worst position of all the stocks I discussed today for three huge reasons, those being debt, rising interest rates, and high gas prices. Now in terms of debt, we can see that Air Canada currently has over $16 billion in short-term and long-term debt on the balance sheet, while they also have cash of about $8.6 billion. Therefore, after subtracting all the cash, Air Canada has net debt of $7.5 billion on their balance sheet, which is more than their entire market cap. So just like we did for TELUS, when we calculate any valuation metrics for Air Canada, it's essentially going to be double because of their EV value being over double their market cap. So that is just something to keep in mind when Air Canada finally becomes profitable again, seen as they just lost $1.1 billion in the most recent quarter. Second, when it comes to rising interest rates, Air Canada could be placed into the same category as that of TELUS because it does have a ton of debt. And finally, with gas prices going through the roof, Air Canada is struggling in this inflationary environment. Airlines in general are highly sensitive to the price of gasoline, and with WTI oil prices still being above $110 per barrel, it's going to be extremely tough to get to profitability anytime soon, in my own opinion. In fact, in Q1 2022, Air Canada's top expense was of course aircraft fuel, coming in at $750 million. Overall, there are a ton of factors going against Air Canada right now, and even though they might have enough cash on their balance sheet, just the fact that the company is still unprofitable two years after the pandemic just makes me very worried, and I would not want to invest in this company. Anyways, moving on to the third and final stock today that I will not be buying, and that is Fortis with ticker symbol FTS.TO. Fortis is one of Canada's biggest utility companies where it provides gas and electricity transmission to residential and commercial customers all across North America. Now, checking Fortis's stock, it's actually done really well over the past few decades, having slow but steady growth, and the same is true for the past five years where it's up just under 25%, but that return doubles after accounting for dividends. And although I have owned this stock in the past and I have spoken about it quite highly on my YouTube channel, I would not be a fan of buying this stock right now, and here's why. First of all, just like Telus, Fortis's valuation is far more expensive than it appears. Currently, Fortis is expected to earn $2.79 per share in 2022, while their stock price is $58.14 per share, meaning the stock has a forward PE ratio of 20.8. Now this is actually cheaper than TELUS stock, which was trading at about 23 times earnings, but we do have to account for the earnings growth rate, and for Fortis, they're only expected to grow per year at about 4.6% over the next five years. This means Fortis stock currently has a peg ratio above four, which is absolutely astronomical. Not to mention, we also have to look at Fortis's EV relative to their market cap, which is about double their market cap right now, immediately suggesting to me that Fortis has a lot more debt than cash on the balance sheet. In fact, we can calculate Fortis's EV per share by nearly doubling the current share price of $58.14, which does give us $114.88 per share. Now calculating Fortis's 2022 forward EV to earnings ratio, it comes to 41, which is extremely expensive for its growth rate. Furthermore, Fortis would have an EV to earnings growth ratio above eight guys, like eight. I have never seen a peg ratio around eight. Now I do understand why the company trades so expensive. It does have a 48 year history of consecutive dividend increases and its income is extremely stable being a regulated utility company. But in my opinion, investors should not be 
expecting any market beating returns from Florida stock at this valuation, especially with rising interest rates. As I explained before, the utility sector is an interest rate sensitive sector, meaning that stock prices generally fall during this time of inflation and rising interest rates. And that's because Fortis has over $25 billion in long-term debt on the balance sheet, so only a 1% increase in their average interest rate would result in $250 million more in interest expenses per year. So once again, I ask why would anyone buy Fortis stock when they could buy TD Bank stock growing at like triple the rate of Fortis and at half the valuation? It honestly just doesn't make any financial sense to me, but that's just me. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video or gathered some value, and if you did, don't forget to drop a like. It really does help out my channel, and I really do appreciate that. Also guys, don't forget to sign up for the Neo Cashback MasterCard. This is a really good credit card here in Canada, and I would highly recommend it. But anyways, with that said, I will see you guys in the next one.